Are you called to go to the nations with your worship flags? This video is for you. This is going to be a commissioning message for you. You will be empowered and ready to go after you find out who we're talking to in today's Firecatchers chat. Join us. Welcome Firecatchers, I'm Andrea York with Catch the Fire Worship Flags and today is another episode of our Firecatchers chat. A few weeks ago, I woke up to a text from Martha Brennecke who was in Brazil at the time and she was telling me some of the testimonies that were happening and I said, hold on, hold on, this is too good for just me. I need to have you come on to a Firecatchers chat so that you can share some of your story and testimonies with the Firecatchers. So I want to welcome Martha Brennecke to our chat today. Welcome, Martha. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for agreeing. So yeah, like I said, that was the best way to wake up to a text. Um, you're, well, Brazil is two hours, I think, ahead, right? Still central time. You are located in Tennessee, uh, as uh-huh. you mentioned. And yeah, and so it was, a, it was two hours ahead. You texted me in the morning. And so it was just like a fantastic way. I always feel called to the nations and taking my worship flags. And then when you mentioned that, I'm like, yeah, we need, this is, this is more than just you understanding the call. I think that the Lord is actually raising up more and more um, and what that means. And just before we even begin, we kind of chatted at the beginning. You were blessed with some prophetic art and I see your worship flags at the back. Can you kind of explain what we're looking at in the background? Because I think that that deserves some recognition. Yes. Well, I'm drawn to the throne room. And so what's in the throne room? You've got seraphim, you've got the four living creatures and all kinds of wonderful, amazing heavenly beings that worship the Lord. So I just, whatever I feel let drawn to in the spirit, I collect and I put it on these walls right here in the back. And Right here, this blue one is a big seraphim holding a hot coal from Isaiah 6. And I just love that. Sometimes the sunrise, when I open my window here, will hit that and light it up in the mornings. And it's just beautiful. So that's what that is. And there's one that's dancing. And in the background, if you want me to get up and go show it to you, I can. But she is in a field and she's dressed in a long dress and she has a shofar. And this is something I got in Israel last year. And I I have a little story about that too. So yeah, and there's just the harvest angels and the warring, the fully armored angels, and then uh, pictures of Jerusalem, the city, and the picture, one of the angels that this prophetic artist did, her name is Amanda. She uh, did this big uh, poster of that angel. And a little girl was walking by at the conference and she stopped her mommy and she said, mommy, she, how did she know she painted my angel? And so I couldn't afford to buy the big one. So I just got this little one for like $30 and put it on my wall. But yes, that's the story of the angels. I love prophetic art. I, I love, we have several prophetic pieces in our home as well. And so that's fantastic. So you were telling me, I asked you earlier if that artist was in your church and you said, no, she's part of your team. So let's get right into it. I think yes. that this is a commissioning video. I think that if there's going to be fire catchers who are watching that feel called and to go to the nations and they don't know what that looks like or mm-hmm. how to get set up and tell us what does it mean to like, what are these trips that you're taking? Well, it happened pretty quickly in my life. I I had no idea I was going to be going on mission fields. In fact, when I was invited by a lady at my church to come with her to Rick Bonfem Ministries on a mission trip to Brazil, the first thing in my mind was, no, I am not going because Martha likes to jump at everything and just do everything. I was like, nope, nope, you're not going. But within 24 hours, the Holy Spirit convicted me and said, came to me and said, yes, you are. You are going. And I'm like, oh, and so I repented for that. And so that was my first mission. It was just a couple years ago. And I had never done flags before. And prior to that, my whole life, I've been part of, I'm just drawn to Israel. I love the Hebrew. I was part of a Messianic congregation in Washington State many years ago. I learned and taught beginner, intermediate, and advanced Messianic worship dance. 
And I still do that uh, on occasion. And so that's where, you know, and I'm not a dancer, but I love Israeli praise and worship because I want to dance as David danced. You know, I want to marry him with a tambourine, you know, and just, I love worship. So loving worship is key. Loving to worship a holy, amazing God, Yahweh, you know. And so here I go to Brazil and I'm just, you know, we're praying for all these people and, and uh, it is just so celebrative. And I think we prayed for between 800 and 1,000 people. I, I lost my voice on that trip. That's how much praying we did for people. And they started this song, and our team was up on stage just leading some worship. And then all of a sudden, I saw uh, some of the youth come up and some young people, and they had flags, big ones, little ones, all kinds of flags. And they started celebrating. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I looked at my leader. I says, can I go? You know, can I go off the stage? She's like, what? And I was like, I can't wait for her response. And I went and I jumped off the stage, landed safely on the floor. And I, this lady come up to me and handed me a flag. And it's been history ever since. And from that point on, I said, God, what is going on with these flags? And I came home and I didn't know anything in the scripture about flags, about color. I knew colors was in the Bible. I know heaven's about color. But then I just started praying and asking God, if you want me to do flags, then, you know, show me where to get them. So I went to a coffee shop here at home in Cookville, Tennessee. And this lady that I met there, she says, I have something for you. I didn't even know her or her husband. I just prayed for her husband. And from that, told me to come out to her car. And I came out to her car and she handed me some green camouflage flags. And she says, these are warrior flags. And she says, I really feel like you need these. Now, I don't have them currently because I've loaned them to my niece who's in a time of warfare. So I loaned them to her. But then she's like, thank you, Jesus. She says, and these are for you, too. And she handed me these flags here. Beautiful. And they have these things on the bottom. So when you wave them, they make sound. And they also fold, you know, like really easy and they go in your back. So I had been asking the Lord for that. And she says, I bought these flags four years ago. God told me to buy them, never use them. They're brand new. And she said, someday the Lord will show me who to give them to. And she says, that person is you. And she says, these are the flags of the nations. And so I was like, whoa, you know, when, when a prophetic word is spoken to you, you feel it in your soul. You know, it's just like when she said, these are the flags of the nations. And I took them and I started waving them. I was like, oh, God, what are you doing in my life? And so I still didn't fully understand flags. I've never done a flag to a class or anything like that. I just said, Holy Spirit, will you please just teach me what it is, the movements and how you want me to move these flags according to your spirit? What are you wanting to do with these flags in my hands? And I started looking up scriptures. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, study the throne room. And I've been, I've been in that ever since. I, I can't get out of that that study. You're talking about the throne room in Revelation 4 and 5. Ezekiel 1. Ezekiel 1, okay. Ezekiel 1. I'm talking about anything in the Word of God that talks about, and yes, Revelation. I'm talking about all the things in the Word of God that talks about the throne room. It's such an incredible story. Now, I want to encourage anybody who's watching, any of the fire catchers who are watching, that God can be calling you and not have some random stranger give you a set of worship flags. I he, know. It, it can be as simple as responding in your heart and purchasing them yourselves it it doesn't have to be that was cu quite radical i've heard of other stories like that but i just want to encourage anybody it's not just just because nobody's given you a set of flags and said you need these uh doesn't mean that you're not called so i just wanted to clarify that but it is really remarkable and tell me like so how long ago you said it was a few years but like it's only it's really only been since pre-covid right uh, after covid Oh, even more recent than that. Yes, because I lost both my parents, not from COVID, but before COVID was kind of out there in 2019, 2020, I lost my parents February and, and May of that year, 2020. And, and I took care of them in their home. And so from that, I started seeking God. What do you want me to do? Because I was depending on my parents a lot to pray. I was like, Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. And then when I lost them, I'm like, oh my goodness. I didn't realize how much I depended on them. And so I went through a season, just felt like forever, seeking God and trying to just draw into him, 
and just see what he wanted to do with my life because I didn't realize how much they had become my life. And so I was uh, in this very humble place and, and just like, you know, grieving loss. And God just used that in my life. And anytime I'm drawn into something like flags, like something that's just kind of not everybody accepts flags in churches and so forth. I mean, we're kind of peculiar, you know, but I have to say I had to go to God and ask him, if this is you, I need you to put flags in my hands. God hears our heart. He knows that we need something to confirm his work in us sometimes. And so what God has been using me personally with is that when I went to the mission in in Mexico, Reynosa, Mexico, I said, God, I'm not taking any flags with me. If you want me to do flags in worship there in Mexico, then just have someone come up and give me some flags to use. I said, otherwise, you know, I'll take a scarf or whatever. So I have to say, God is an amazing God. and There's nothing impossible with him. And he, my very first service, the pastor's wife came up to me and handed me a pair of white flags. And I was like, are you for real? God, you really answering this prayer? <laughs> and so, and then I went to another service later that day and, and in the evening and the same thing happened. Someone came up to me and gave me a set, not gave me, they didn't give them to me. They just put them in my hands to use while I was there. And I'm just coming home and I'm just like, God, does this mean you want me to just start worshiping with flags instead of, you know, just your normal stand? And I'm not saying it's wrong to just stand there and worship. I mean, God sees our heart, you know, and we're worshiping him in spirit and in truth. And so I'm finding that what God is wanting me to do is to invite more to come into worship, you know, and and a lot of time intercessory prayer is happening during the flag. And this past mission trip to Brazil, I, I'm just in awe because what God is doing with these flags, he's using me to, one time the Lord told me, take an extra set of flags. You're going to be giving them to someone. And so I took an extra set of flags to Brazil and we were in this church and this church was very oppressed. And there was like this big satanic like witchcraft area where they do blood sacrifices and everything. And so we were in this area and this church was so oppressed. And our second service there, you know, it seemed like, you know, sometimes the thickness in the atmosphere is just so thick. You just feel like you can cut it. And so I was worshiping. And then all of a sudden, one of my worship leaders says, there she is. That's who you're supposed to give those flags to. And I found her. And right in the middle of worship, I went over to her and handed her these flags. And she came out of the pew, came up front. And as soon as she opened her hands to break forth and worship with those flags for the first time in her life, the whole atmosphere broke. And there was like the whole place on, on every one in the whole building just just stood up and started worshiping God. And that is the power of worship. It breaks down the strongholds. It sets captives free because it's the spirit of the living God. And where, where he, where he is, there's liberty. This is what I'm seeing. Amen. So like, I understand that with the shifting of the atmosphere in revelation four and five, we see the exponential increase of worship where there was the four creatures and then it's the 24 elders. And then it's the myriad of angels. And then it's all creatures in the heavens and the earth and even under the earth. And there's this, this invitation. We talked a little bit at the beginning of the purpose of worship is really not to just have a personal encounter. I think it starts there. And if you don't have personal encounters, it's about a heart issue. But when, as we worship, especially if you are a worship intercessor, like you know that you're called, it is beyond yourself. It is to another end of not just, well, Lord, I want to have a fantastic experience or an encounter with you or an intimacy encounter. It is to break the barriers that is inhibiting other people into worship because worship is supposed to create an exponential increase. Mm -hmm. And you said it at right at the beginning of the video that you have to love worship. And the, in order to you for you to love worship, you have to love the one you're worshiping. You, and, you know, and to love the one you're worshiping, you have to know the one you're worshiping. And so it's this circular cycle of, or to know God is to love him, to love God is to worship him. And more worship begets more worship begets more worship begets more worship. And so this experience with this young gal, fantastic. I have other stories of my own that are similar to that. I just want to clarify, was this your most recent trip to Brazil? 
my most recent trip to Brazil was in January. And that was not what happened in that particular one. It happened in uh, 2023. You know, so this recent, the unity, we were at the mission in Rio de Janeiro for four days. And there was 28 of us on the team from all over, from Georgia, from Tennessee, from Florida, from South Carolina. I mean, people, anyone can come on these missions in any way. So what we do in those four days is we look at ourselves and we, you know, go have the Lord just Holy Spirit just kind of talk to us what we need to take care of before we go out and start praying for people. You know, before we minister to others, we need to let Holy Spirit minister to us and kind of like search our heart, get ready. And so we have this amazing like time with God. And the minister of this Rick Bonfim came up to me and he says, I want you to pick some women. And uh, how many flags do you have? How many did you bring with you? And I said, well, I brought seven or eight, I think. He says, well, I want you to pick some women from this group and I want you to teach them. I'm just like, whoa, okay. So I, I went around and invited seven or eight, I invited everybody, all the women. And I said, anyone who wants to wave a flag or learn or anything, just come and I'll meet with you. And so I did. And I was like, okay, God, I know nothing, hardly nothing about flags is how I, you know, and you want, want me to teach it. Okay. So I'm just going to teach the simplicity of why I do what I do. And so I, I got them all together and there was about seven of them and they were holding flags. Yeah. What happened was, is that I said, look, if you, if you want to just practice with me and we just wave the flags back and forth and back and forth. And that's the movement that they learned. And I said, and then if you want to do something more than that, you can go above your head and come back down. And, you know, I just showed them a few little things. And I said, it's not just about waving a flag. When you are up there doing waving the flag just back and forth, if that's all you're doing, but our purpose, coming together with one purpose, and the one purpose is we need to pray for the people. We need to pray for breakthrough for all the people while we're waving our flag through worship, that breakthrough happens, that they're healed. And so we come together with one mind, with the same purpose, in unity, and God does this amazing thing. And you don't have to have hardly any skill to do this. And I saw so many amazing things with just the women just waving their flags. They didn't have, they had never done it in their life before. But God just, you could just see some of the videos from the service where their faces were just beaming. And then a little child would come up in, in the middle of service and stand at our feet and just look up at us like, you know, and then they wanted our flag to wave. And so we would, I noticed that a lot of that happens in services where the children, little bitty ones will come up and they'll just be in awe. And I think they see angels or something because it's just amazing what is happening with the little kids. And so I don't think you have to have a bunch of skill. You just have to have that heart and to want to worship and to pray for the people and to see breakthrough. It, it is coming from someone who does really has no skill. I grew up in a Mennonite culture where we didn't even have school dances because in this Mennonite town, because, you know, that was dancing was a sin, really. And so God has taken me into this whole genre of movement. And it is the power of the worship. It's the heart that comes before the Lord. He is so pleased. And he is that he sits on, he's enthroned on our praises. And that mm -hmm. is in our movement, in our words, in our hearts. When we talk about God being on the throne of our hearts, it's like, that's where the praise is. That's where your worship is. And so you're right. It doesn't matter if it's awkward. It doesn't matter if you are confined to a chair. It doesn't matter if you can barely get your hand over your shoulder, yeah. you can just do whatever movement. And I think that the, the Lord multiplies that. He sees the heart and it shifts the angels. I think that it uh -huh. shifts and moves yeah. the angels because we're not talking just with worship flags and the piece of fabric. I keep talking a lot about how it's movement and color that actually are languages. And yeah. so if we're speaking God's language and if his language, one of his languages is color. And he says that the angels hearken to his voice when we are actually lifting up a worship flag as being called, I believe that we are actually projecting his voice 
in a way that we like we have to understand this in the in the spirit of what's happening. And so when we're saying we're shifting atmospheres, it's the it's the angels are are getting involved. Sometimes they're warring. Sometimes I've actually had some opportunities where I've been worshiping and well, I know angels just entered the room just to marvel at hearts that have the free will to choose to do this or not to do this. And I think that they marvel at those of us who who have chosen which means we've said no to a lot of other distractions or a lot of other things and we've said you are worthy lord and i have to lay my life down i have to live offer my body as a living sacrifice and yes, so amen. what you released to those girls or those women is exactly that you've given them a tool and i don't know about you are you a singer a lot of our worshipers or flaggers tend to uh, like say that they're not singers i do not sound lovely when i sing but i can make it's a a joyful noise but i can lift up my hands and and, uh, declare to the nations lift up a banner and declare to the nations and that's what you're doing you're you're declaring a breakthrough you're declaring the the place of refuge it talks about that it is his ensign is a is a refuge to the nations it's a declaration to the mm-hmm. destruction mm-hmm. of the nations in jeremiah 50 verse 2 and you don't need we just need to follow the lord that's so fantastic mm-hmm. you know in this group obviously they like worship flags they appreciate them they see the value they know the value and and the the power behind when god gets in what god gets in and uses them tell me is that always your case or how, because sometimes we're fighting against that flesh and blood that says, get that away from, from your, mm-hmm. it's distracting. What is your response? Well, of course, I'm going to uh, submit in that particular situation to the leadership if they don't want flags and I can still be joyful before the Lord in other ways because we're worshiping from our heart in spirit and in truth. So that's not a problem for me. But what I've noticed that, let's say like for the little town of Salina, it's just like eight miles from here. Lots of religion, lots of drugs and alcohol. A lot of people tried to go in there and missionize that place, but it is hard ground. So what does God do? One day I'm meeting a friend outside of the town, going for a little walk, and I bring my flags and my little speaker, and I am we're worshiping together in the park. And, you know, I have this little, little speaker like thing here and I just take it, take it everywhere. And so we're worshiping and we go back to our cars to leave and God turns it into something else. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is warfare. So we start praying, sending up our prayers up to heaven about Salina and about the strongholds in the city. And and we're just interceding and we're praying in spirit. We're just like, really, I'm like, oh boy, something's going to happen. And so. I have to say, I'm amazed. I'm amazed and I'm amazed what God is doing since then. God's called my husband and I to start a small Bible study on Monday night. And when he first called us to do it, I said, no, 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 you've mistaken. This is a hard place. We're not ready. We're not, we're not pastors. We're not this. We're not that, you know, and the Holy Spirit says, no, but you are who I want to start to be there. And so I'm saying that to say, The place where I was prohibited, it used to be a church there, but now it's a realtor company owned by someone in my church. And they said, you could have your Bible study there on those grounds. The very ground where I was rejected is the very ground where God brings me in and my husband. Look at that. And so I'm just saying, if God wants it there, it's going to happen. You know, it's just, it's his kingdom on earth that we pray for, that it would be you know, his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And so we're here to do his will, not our will. And that's what I'm finding. And that's why I ask God about flags, because I want to be in his perfect will, you know, and I, I talked with you uh, prior to this video and I told you I'm looking for some bigger flags. And so I, I took that to God. I, t- I went online and looked first, but I took that to the Lord and I said, what do you say about this? What do you want? And so Sunday, this lady comes up to me uh, that I know, and her name is Deb. And she says, I've been given these flags. I don't know what to do with them. They're way too big for me. And I looked at her and my mouth's hanging open. I'm like, are you for real, God? You know? Yes, he is for real. And I just want to, I'm going to show you these. 
flags that she handed to me. I just got them yesterday. They're just all kinds of color. And they're big. Now, this is God. This is not anything I didn't ask. No one knew other than you and me searching online that I, you know. So these are the kind of things that happens to me. And this last trip to Brazil, when I was leaving, I'll just tell you a really quick story. I remember I told you and I had given my blue, one of my blues and one of my reds. And I thought, well, no big deal. I'll come home and I'll just order some more from Cash the Fire and I can order one blue and one red and get my thing back. And I get come and find out that's not how it happens. You know, I can't do that. So, but the, the late there, a lady came on the, my very last evening and she says, we have something for you. And so this whole worship team came to me and they handed me these. And they're pretty big, you know, and they're flex, they're flex rods. This keeps happening to me. So what I see God doing is like, he gives me flags, I give flags out. He gives me flags, I give flags out. He's wanting people to use this, to use flags in worship. He's calling people to do this. And his worshipers, he's gathering us. Because, you know, they always send out the worshipers before the army. Okay, so we're preparing the way of the Lord. You know, we're, we're going, and I love that. I love going before just being a part of that is just beautiful. And, I know, always say, I always say that the, it's the worship is actually one and the battle is one in the worship and the soldiers are the cleanup crew. Yes. So you sometimes at church, I have a shofar in my one hand and a flag in the other. And I just wait, wait on God to tell me when you want me to do the shofar, you know, and if I feel it's going to be a, a moment in the in the worship that he wants me to do the shofar, I do it. I have to wait on God to do everything. And the most amazing thing I want to tell anyone out there, do not worry about the money. Please. Every flag that I have here, God gave me the money for my flags to buy from you. I have a gold set metallic, a blue set metallic, and I have the, the red metallic. And that's all I have bought from Catch the Fire. All the other flags were given to me. And then I bought some for the little children for the church. And I just gave those. And they were just something I got online, you know, pretty reasonable, cheap, you know, that the little kids wanted these, you know, little, little ones. But I just say all that to say, if God is calling you to worship, he's going to provide the tools in your hands. And I just believe that either someone's going to donate and give money to you to buy the flags, or you're going to be blessed somehow with the flags. And there's a lady at our church right now. Her name is Alicia, and she's absolutely amazing, beautiful. And while I was out of town to Brazil, God used her to get up and do flags for the very first time. And she's like, oh, my goodness, Martha, I'm hooked. And she wants some of your flags. I think she said the Lion of Judah flag or something like that. But she can't afford them yet. But I was like, man, maybe I should give her, you know, I want to give her a set of my flags. And I'm like, I'm praying about that because I don't want to hold on to stuff. I want to bless people with what God is blessing me with. I hear that. I travel, particularly when I travel, I take flags always. And and I know that I will most likely not be bringing them back home with me. And we've had some conversations, the Lord and I, when I'm like, I really like these flags and I can't get them again. Can I keep them? And he never gives me the answer before. Like, I have to go, do you love them more than me? Uh -huh. I'm like, oh, Lord, you know <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we have to be obedient. And that that is that is it. What, my first trip, I think I took 50, 50 flags to just to give away. I took nothing home. Wow. And I mean, that was, you know, it was not just, it was a great expense to, to me, but he wants to know if he can bless you in the little things, then he'll, he'll give you, be a steward of the bigger things. And so thank you for not burying your treasure and not for burying what you have, that you have released it continually again and again. And I just want to say, I want to ask you if you would mind praying for our fire catchers 
I know that there are several here that are watching and, and all the way to the end. Sometimes it takes great discipline to watch a video all the way to the end. If that is you and you're watching Worship Her, I want you to know that God is raising you up, that he, that all of the no's and the things that are in your heart that says you, why you can't do something, that there's no space for you, that there's no space in the spirit for you, that you don't have the finances. I want you to know that God is releasing everything that you have that where he has called you, he will also provide for you. We know that as Christians, we, we hear that a lot that where God calls, he provides, but we don't actually believe it. And I, and this is a message to you, worshiper. God is calling and he is going to do miraculous things. We've heard Martha's story of miraculous means, and I'm going to ask her to pray for you right now and release that because what we have, we can always impart. And that's part of the giving it away. Don't wait until you are, you feel that you're fully equipped. The Lord is, is, is he going to be equipping you now and get started with even the movements of your arms, practice being in the throne room and seeing what you see, ask the Lord to see in the spirit, all of the color and the movement there. And, and that's where it's going to be your teacher. So that's not even your excuse either that you don't have any movement. So for that is for you, Martha, would you pray for us? Yes. And before I pray, can, can I just share one of the most amazing things that happens when I'm worshiping is all of a sudden there'll be such a joy that hits me that I can't hardly contain it. And it shows so much on my face that it just it's like a breakthrough. The joy that when it comes on me, it just like, you know how when you, you take some pebble and throw it into the water and has all these ripples. That's what happens when the joy hits. It just ripples out. So I just, yeah. so let's do, let's do pray. All right. Heavenly Father. Oh my Jesus. I thank you so much for the opportunity to share about you and about what you're doing in my life. Father, I just pray for all of your worshipers right now that they will catch the fire, that they, God, will know that you lead them. And even if they feel inadequate and not good enough or whatever, Father, I just pray that you would just remove all of that from them, that they would see who they are in you, that who you have created them to be, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, I pray that nothing prevent them from coming into the walk that you have, intimacy that you have for them, Father. Oh God, I pray that you would just open up their finances, that they would be able to buy or people would give them what they need to worship you, God. And even if they can't do much, but just wave it, but that, Father, they would be worshiping you from the depths of their heart, God, and their soul. And they would be praying for the people and breakthrough would happen in their churches, God, in their houses, in their family, their bloodline. God, that they would begin to see you moving in their midst, God. And we love you. And we just submit to you. We resist the enemy, Satan, in Jesus' name. And we know he will flee. And Father, I ask for your Holy Spirit to just come now. Fill us up from the tips of our toes all the way to the top of our heads. We pray that everything that we do, we lift you up, Father. We bow down and we lay all of our crown before you. Anything that we've accomplished ourselves, in ourselves, we lay it at your feet, Father, and we just ask that we be pleasing in your sight, that we be able to wash your feet humbly before you, God, that we would never exalt ourselves or think that we're doing something uh, to exalt ourselves, God, but we bow down to you and only you, the true living God, Yahweh, the great I am, the Alpha and the Omega. And I just thank you, Father, for these men and women. Father, I have seen men grab flags. So, Father, I just pray over the children, over the men and women, God, that you are calling into worship in this way, Father, that we are obedient. And we thank you. We give it to you right now in Yeshua's mighty name, by the blood of Yeshua. Amen. 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 Thank you for, for that is your commissioning call. That is prayed over you. Thank you, Martha, for releasing that. Thank you for your time and sharing your story. You radiate joy. You really, you can see on your face that it's the fountain of youth is the joy of the Lord. 
And I know that someone's going to ask in the in the comments about you you mentioned these worship trips and that anybody can go. So could you we're going to provide that information in the show notes, but do you tell us now yes. the organization like how like someone I can see I want to go with you. Yes. <laughs> If I wanted to go with you, how could that happen? Well, you're welcome to give my phone number to them and have them call me and I'll hook them up with uh, RBM Ministries. I would like to know if there is anyone out there that would like to go on one of the mission trips to Brazil. Uh, We're going in June and then we're going to Peru in August and then we're going to Cuba in October. And then I'll be going to Mexico with my my church, Reynosa, Mexico, in uh, November. And if God puts any other trips in the midst of that, that's up to him. But and then all you need is like two hundred dollars down. And a lot of times. okay, I just want to tell everybody when my parents got sick, I quit my job. We went from a two person income to one. And I have been able to go on all of these mission trips by donations. I don't even sometimes know how it happens. It just miraculously takes place. And if God wants me on these missions, he wants me to, he sends me out. I don't send me out. And so I say that to say, don't let money, and it costs like $3,200 or $2,800 to $3,200 to go on these missions. And I, I take an extra $300 to give to the people for food, for these churches that are so poor that have dirt floors and so forth. I mean, and God always provides that offering too. And sometimes the day before I'm driving out of the driveway and the day of I'm driving out of the driveway. So I have to go to the bank before I go to Atlanta. So I'm just saying, don't let money stop you from going. If you want to go, contact me by phone and I will hook you up with your, you know, your deposit and then uh, we'll move from there. So I hope, I hope some people come along. Yeah. Your life will be changed forever. Trust me. These people uh, believe that Jesus is going to do miracles. The blind eyes see. The people walk and leap. That's never wa- There was a lady on the sidewalk who just couldn't walk. She just, so we stopped and we prayed for her. And then all of a sudden she's doing all of this stuff and like gymnastics and stuff. She was right there on the street. So these are the kind of miracles we just see everywhere. And I love it because their faith is, they really love Yeshua when they're introduced to him and they see what he can do in their life and they're delivered from all the oppression. There's just no limit. There's no limits. Exactly. And I want to just make a comment that in 2025, I know Catch the Fire Worship Flags is actually organizing a trip. I'm talking with Holy Spirit now to see where we're going to be going. Because I know that as as part of my regional call is to go to the regions and declare and release God's vision for that nation. It is sometimes into very dark places where we cannot mention the name of Jesus. but We know that when we offer our worship as intercession prayer, that it is, like the word says, it is powerful and effective and the word of the Lord will go out and not return void. And so if you are interested in that, keep watching what we're doing in Catch the Fire Worship Flags. There'll be notifications by email and on their website too. So that's coming. And thanks, Martha, once again, for joining us for the Fire Catchers Chat. If you are watching and you have a flagging testimony, I want to hear you because we want to share that testimony with the world. So please message me. Email will be in the show notes. And don't forget to subscribe and get notified so that you'll know when we post more videos. Thanks for joining.